question. The book of John, the gospel of John, what's the, I don't know if you call it the theme verse or the, what's the purpose of the gospel of John? Or if you can tell me the reference that Dr. Lott mentions frequently. The world does say John 3.16. That's not it. <laughs> that is a good one. They're all good. You can't go wrong if you say somewhere in the book of John. But, uh, John 8.32. Come on now. Uh, that's really good. We're going to spend a lot of time on that today. But the, the purpose of the gospel of John. These things are written that... You might believe, okay? Do you remember the reference? John 20, verse 31. Don't forget that, okay? That might be on a test if he ever gives a test. <laughs> I would think that would be number one. Uh, these things are written that you might believe. What does it mean to believe? I, I could start every class I teach with this conversation. If you've ever had me in a class, you know. that. In, so, so don't answer for everybody if you remember the answer until we, get, until we exhaust our time and say, okay. Uh, but what does it mean to believe? What is the definition of the word believe? And the reason I can start every class with this is because my purpose in teaching is to try to get you to believe something. Okay? That's, that's why we teach. What, is, what, is, uh, what does it mean to believe? To hold true. To what now? To hold true. Hold true? Can I say truth? Would that hurt it any? I'm going to put the word believe here at the top. Anything else? True belief is a motivator. That's a characteristic. I was going to ask, that's the next question. What are, what are characteristics of, uh, of, of believing? And it's a motivator, motivation. It does have, it's, uh, yes. Confidence has a lot to do with it. it actually, it's part of my definition. <laughs> It leads to action, which, would, which, which uh, is, has to do with motivation, right? Mm -hmm. Motivation to act. Yep. Oh, Say it again. Don't be looking. Dennis, Dennis, don't be looking it up. This is out of your brain, not out of Google, okay? <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Okay. I, well, no, but I was, wanting to, I was wanting to try to pick our brains, but you're right. Okay, being convinced, which has confidence in it, convinced, uh, this is my definition, or persuaded that something is true. One characteristic is it's a motivation. The other, the other characteristic that I like to mention is also starts with an M. I know there's three boys in the back that have been through my classes multiple times. But it's been years. This will be good. Matter of degree. degree. I am too. That's awesome. That's good. When you, when you say it's a matter of degree, what does that mean? If anything's a matter of degree, huh? You can have little or much. And I always picture it with a gas gauge. Empty or full, okay? A matter of degree can be trust. Keep an eye on it. Okay. So uh, the Bible talks about great faith, little faith, no faith, strong faith, full of faith, all matters of degree, okay? You go to Hebrews chapter 11. It's a continuous list of, what, of people who believed something and it motivated them to act, okay? And it tells the different actions that they took. So the stronger you believe something, the more it motivates you to act upon it, okay? Uh, if I don't believe it at all, I won't act upon it at all, okay? If I, and, and I have uh, this, a recent, relatively recent, last few years, kind of an epiphany or a thought is uh, if you're full of faith, you say, whatever it is, this doesn't have to be spiritual stuff, okay? This could be anything in the world, all right? Well, you... you uh, let me back up just a second before I go to this. Uh, what, if, you, if you say it's being convinced or persuaded that something is true, what is truth? How 
How would you define truth to a five-year-old? Does a five-year-old know what truth is? They have their own, usually. <laughs> <laughs> is, okay, so that's not a bad thought. There's a lot of people in our world who say, well, that's your truth, this is my truth. What do you think about that? Yeah. So it, de- it says here... Don't be looking up, true definition. This, this, this is when y'all are not around, and I have to know, this is what I got to I understand, but this is about but, picking people's brains. An inward conviction, a feeling of certainty about what something means. This is the definition of truth? Not truth, belief. Okay. <laughs> We're on. What you hold dear and rudely, deeply, rudely, Rooted deeply within, a belief is both mental and emotional. Okay, stop reading, Dennis. Dennis, 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 stop reading. What is what is what is truth? The way something really is. Ah, re- reality, fact, the way this is it is. Uh, concrete when it's dried. Is hard, right? The sun is hot. Two plus two is four. Okay? Truth is the way it is. It's not what I think it is. It's the way it is. Okay? My, uh, what, what are some characteristics of truth? If you could, and I like to depict truth as with this little drawing. If you could write a list of all the true sentences in the entire universe, I just named a couple, concrete is hard, the sun is hot, two plus two is four. If you could list all the sentences of truth in the entire world, what do you know about them? What characteristics do they have? They have evidence. They, they, they do produce evidence, which goes to one of the characteristics that I would, I, there's four I like to try to, to bring to mind. None contradict. There's another fellow that was been through, not that I taught it. I mean, he may have, I mean, I did teach it, but anyway. None contradict. God, you, knows, them God knows them all. These other two I added since y'all been in class, okay, just so you know. <laughs> they actually was students in class that added them. I thought, that's pretty good. Uh, they don't change. I mean, concrete is soft one day and hard the next, so you, if it dries, you, know, you could maybe say it changes, but it doesn't change. And this one is biblical for sure, and I wrote the verse down somewhere. Uh, it likes to be inspected, which goes to the evidence thing. Truth comes to the light, okay? If, you're, if mama says, did you clean your room? And you didn't clean your room, but you say, yeah, I cleaned your room, my room. She says, well, I'm going to go look. Do you want her to go look, or are you trying to change the subject? You're trying to change the subject, because you don't want her to go look. Cause, but if you cleaned your room, what do you go, yeah! <laughs> oh, open the door. In fact, you might even come say, hey, Mama, come look. I cleaned my room, right? Uh, truth loves to be inspected. And there's a Bible, that, there's a verse that talks about coming to the light, okay? Um, here's another one that the world don't believe we could, we could actually add. This is another biblical one. Can you know it? Can you know truth? Jesus' word is truth, Jesus word is truth right? And he says, you shall know the truth. And the truth sh-. There's a lot of people who say you can't know truth. There's, that's the same people who say, well, that's your truth and this is mine. Okay? And they're just so confused. Well, you can believe that. I'm going to believe this. Well, yeah, I might have, I might, again, you could depict this as a list. I've got a list of things that I believe to be true. And my list may not be the same as yours. That can be different. Why? Because it's easy to believe what? A lie. But it's possible to believe truth. And this fact that, uh, how do you come to know truth? Well, evidence. This right here is probably, the. these two I think are the biggest. It likes to be inspected. And none of them contradict. Um, You've got a list of things you believe to be true. And when you come face to face, how do you you know anything? How do you come to perceive anything? Study. Study is one word. Huh? Observation. Observation. 
I, li I, I just get real scientific here. I limit it to five ways which study and observation are fit into these, but you either see it, hear it, smell it, taste it, or feel it. It's the only way you get stuff into your brain, okay? Five senses. And so, um, is it possible to get something into your brain that's wrong? Yes. What do you do every time, and even now in this class this morning, every time you are presented with information, whether you read it, hear it, smell it, taste it, whatever, every time you're presented with information, what do you do instinctively as a six-month-old and all the way to 60? I'm not 60 yet, but I'm close. Uh, what do you do? You compare it to the things you've got in your list. You go, well, because why? Because you know no two truths contradict. So if somebody presents you with a piece of information that is different from what you already believe, you go, wait a minute. No two truths contradict. That ain't what I believe. Something's, something's not right here. So you've got, a, you've got a, a choice to make. How do you modify what's in your list? What's the biblical word? Which again, this doesn't, it doesn't have to be spiritual things that we're talking about. This can be anything you believe to be true. What's the biblical word for modifying what's in your list? A change of the way you think, which is what this is, right? This is the way you think. A change of the way you think, which results in a change of the way you act because what you believe to be true motivates your action. So if you change the way you think, you're by default changing the way you act. What's the biblical word for that? Starts with an R. Repent. Repent. Okay. So this is a basic review of the process of believing. And can you make somebody change the way they think? No, that's up to them. God doesn't make us change the way we think, does He? No, He doesn't. All right. So, what's John? What's the purpose of the book of John? These things are written that you might believe. Okay? And so, He's writing to give us things to put in our list. All right, we're down to uh, verse uh, 27. Jesus has had this conversation with the woman at the well. Oh, this is an awesome, i got so many things I want to say, but a uh, uh, long way to go in a short time to get there. Uh, what, the, uh, have you learned anything from this, some of this occurred, some of this conversation took place last quarter. Have you learned anything from the woman at the, from the, from, from this time going through this uh, account of the woman at the well? I mean, I have, I have, that I never thought about before, that I thought was very interesting. But have you, I guess. I want you to share it if you have. I always, I mean, you read the, you read, you know, where's your, you don't have anything to draw with. Well, that's kind of obvious. He wanted her to draw the water, which, and she's a Samaritan. He's Jew. Men don't talk to women. Certainly Jews don't talk to Samaritans. And so, you know, yep, move on, right? I got the, the part I never considered before is he didn't have anything to drink with. He was going to drink from her cup. That's, to me, really profound, okay? <laughs> I'm not sure I would drink from anybody else's cup, much less a, 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 a foreigner that I didn't think much of or whatever. I, mean, I know the Lord thought of her, thought well of her. But anyway, that was pretty enlightening to me. I'd never really considered that. So he's asked to drink from her cup. And uh, let's just review what he said here. Jesus said, Woman, believe the hour's coming continues to come when you shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Because she changed the subject, right? She changed the subject to spiritual things. He, he started talking about her marriage and she goes, whoa. But that obviously caught her attention that he knew something if he knew about her marriages. So then she changes the subject to talk about spiritual things. And so he starts talking about worship. Because she did. Uh, he starts answering her question. You worship, you Samaritans worship, you know not what. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour continues to proceed, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father continues to seek such to worship Him. God is a spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. The woman saith unto him, this John covered all this last week, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ, when He is come, He will tell us all things. Je Jesus said unto her, 
I that speak unto thee am he. Verse 27. <clears throat> Let's see if I... And upon this... So Jesus having this conversation, the disciples have gone into town. Uh, and upon this, his disciples, came his disciples and marveled. And that, the verb for marvel there is, a, is in the present tense. It's a, they continued to marvel. Okay? They were marveling. They kept on wondering <coughs> that Jesus, and talking is present tense, continued to talk with the woman. Yet no man said, What seekest thou, or why talkest thou to her? Um, first of all, this is John writing this. And um, he, he is, uh, by inspiration, writing this. How did he know nobody, that they all marveled? I mean, that's just a question. I don't know. To me, there's two, ob two answers. Either they murmured, mumbled amongst themselves, and he, he picked up on that, or um, um, the Holy Spirit told him that. Right? Yeah. Or it could have been the way they asked the question. They could have been kind of hinted at there also. I, well, I was going to ask, did he get a drink of water? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I doubt it. Okay. In fact, I'm pretty sure it doesn't mention it. So, uh, but uh, the, the fact that she forgets about the water completely she forgets why she came okay <laughs> it just completely changed her world she just completely uh uh leaves she left her water pot okay <laughs> she didn't even take her water pot back home which is why she came uh, but so so they were marveling but they weren't telling him that's interesting that uh that he that inspiration felt necessary to tell us that i mean they knew it they were all talking about it they weren't going to say anything to him. Uh, wonder why that is. I don't know that I have an answer for that, but other than their, their respect for him, maybe. I don't know. But, uh, well, I it, agree with, with inspiration. But John was one of those disciples. And it was probably like, this is how I was feeling. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> So why was he? That's why he shouldn't have. Why was he? Why did he talk to her? He loved her. So he's getting ready to tell us why he did it. Okay, He's getting ready to answer their thought without them even asking it. Okay. Uh, so um, the woman left her water pot, went her way into the city, and saith, kept, she didn't just do it one time, okay? She said it more than once. To the men, you bunch of stupid men, come out here and look what I found. Is that what she says, she, uh, come see a man which told me all things ever I did. And then a uh, pretty good tactic here too. Uh, it's almost like a question you think this is Christ, okay? As opposed, she, she she's further along the she's further along on the spectrum than they are in terms of believing who he is, okay? Back to back to the point I was going to make a while ago. What's the difference between being full of faith? Because again, you can you be a just talk about being a Christian. Can you can you be a Christian anywhere on this spectrum? Anywhere but probably empty, right? <laughs> you got you to have some degree of faith. What, how much faith do you have to have to be, how much faith in, what do you have to believe to become a Christian? What do you have to believe to be, uh, that Jesus is the Son of God. Is that it? If you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, what's that going to motivate you to do at a minimum? Yeah. Because he said, repent, be baptized. Uh, so at some point, whatever degree it is that you obey in, uh, in uh, being baptized, you become a Christian. But you, is there different degrees of faith in this room today? Is there different degrees of faith upstairs today? Are we not here? Why are we here? To try to grow our faith, right? To try to keep it going. Uh, can faith shrink? Can it go the other way? 
Faith is a motivation, a matter of degree. It can grow and strengthen. Motivation, but also what? That dictates what we must do. Right. Okay, so what's the... Pick something. Pick the speed limit. I strongly believe that you need to drive the speed limit, and if you don't, you're, you're disobeying God. I, as versus, I kind of believe it's a good idea to drive the speed limit versus it doesn't really matter. That's just a suggestion. Everybody else should drive the speed limit. I can drive whatever speed I want to drive. <laughs> you're, on the, you're, on the, you're on the spectrum there, okay? Uh, if you, what's the difference between strong, let's just pick two. Let's pick strong, being, being in the middle and being full. What, what would, what would characterize, if you want to use that word, somebody who's in the middle? How would they act regarding the speed limit? If they, if they believe it's a good idea... They stay, huh? they stay close. They stay close. Some could be what, what about in their relationship to others? Let's talk about other people. Sometimes they, 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 they drive the speed limit most of the time. Sometimes they don't care if they get a little over. What about, what about their kids? How, how, if you were in the middle, what would you, what would you, uh, how would you talk to your kids about the speed limit? Obey the speed limit. Because you know they're not going to. If you're in the middle, whether it's your kids or your neighbor or anybody you, know, you come up to and meet, if you're in the middle... Uh, you're probably not going to talk to others about it very much. You're probably going to maybe obey it yourself, but don't really care whether it, other people can do what they want to do. I'm going to, and that's obvious. They can, everybody can do, make their own choices, but I'm not going to try to persuade anybody that they need to drive the speed limit. I'm just going to do it myself. <laughs> what, what about somebody who's strongly believes that everybody should drive the speed limit and if you don't drive the speed limit you're not going to go to heaven what would I be doing right now if I believe that I would be trying to persuade everybody in here you need to drive the speed limit right because what I the stronger I believe it to be true it motivates my activity not only to change the way I act but to try to persuade other people to change the way they act you got does that does that fit to Christianity if I think it's a good idea, I'll do it myself, but I'm not going to try to persuade anybody else to do it. Versus I strongly believe if you don't become a Christian, you're going to spend eternity separated from God. What, uh, it's a motivation not only to do it myself, but to also it comes out of me to try to persuade other people. I think I, that was kind of the epiphany I've had in recent years that... Uh, not only do I do it myself, now if I'm over on this side, I'm trying to convince other people to do it too. Okay? Um, it, it, it results in words coming out of my mouth. Okay. <clears throat> so, back to the question. Why was Jesus talking to this woman? All right. Um, the woman left her water pot, went her way into the city, and she did what? Went about her business? She was talking. Talking to the men, okay, in an ongoing way. Note the E-T-H in the King James, uh, or the T-H. Saith to the men, come see a man, which told me all things ever I did is not, and this is again, a, as Brother Lop says in his uh, book, a tactful way, as opposed to trying to say, you got to believe this, she's trying to get them interested so that they'll come. <clears throat> so they went out of the city and came unto him. In the meanwhile, his disciples prayed him, asked him, they, they tried to convince him, Master, eat. That's interesting. They were worried about his eating. What, it, where's their mind? Phys, physical or spiritual? Physical. physical. Uh, where was her mind earlier? Where's it at now? Spiritual. Okay, so she's, she's coming along. She... Uh, but he said unto them, I have meat to eat that ye know not of. Why was he talking to her? Because he was eating his meat. Okay? <laughs> he, was, he was satisfying what? What did, uh, 
What did Jesus promise the woman? Huh? Living water. I can't see the clock around there. I got to look right here. Living water. What? Uh, what's What's so special? That's my That's my question. It's kind of, you could say you could answer same answer, I guess. What's so special about this water? You'll never thirst again. It was alive, and you'll never thirst again. What What does that mean? What What does it mean to be alive? What does it mean to never thirst again? Those are two different questions, two different answers. What's, so pick one. What does it mean to never thirst again? What's he trying to say? That you'll have eternal life. You'll have eternal life. So what? That's the that's the uh, yes, that's the answer. Uh, what does it mean to to ne- I'm looking for something kind of in between there. What What does it mean to never thirst? You won't lose your confidence. Won't lose your confidence. Your conviction. Your life will be changed. I'm, uh, the, 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 you don't have to look for salvation anywhere else. You're, you found it, right? You won't be grasping for it anymore. If you've been looking for it, you should be. The word I'm looking for is satisfaction. You'll be satisfied, okay? You'll never thirst again. You will be satisfied. Um, what is it? Uh, are, so I guess my question to us is, are we satisfied? Do we have the living water? Okay, keep that thought in mind. What does it mean to be alive? Not be dead. Not be dead? I wish I, I wish didn't have everything written on there. I'd write on there small. What, it, to not be dead. If something is alive, what is it? It's not dead. Living. Huh? Living. Living. Active. Active. <coughs> That's... Uh, <coughs> I think I can just turn this around. It's locked. All the wheels are locked, and that's locked. Uh, <clears throat> I got it right. There. Active. Uh, we're talking about alive here, or living. It's active, which means another word for that. I would say it's working. It's doing what it does, or what it's supposed to do. Think of anything, an ant. It's alive, right? Ants are alive. They're doing what they're supposed to do, right? Whatever it is that they do, they do it. The Bible talks about, you know, how they store up stuff. Well, the ants have come, come alive at my house. They come alive at yours. <laughs> they're, they're pretty active right now. Uh, alive is active, doing what it's doing. What? Needs nourishment. It needs nourishment. I like the word transformative. It's it's growing. <laughs> and there's one. We've got all that I've got except one more. If something is alive. Not 100% of the time is this true. But it's the va- if, if things are normal, it's true. Okay? If things are not normal, my son has Down syndrome, he will never have children. That's not normal. He cannot what? Reproduce. But if things are hybrid grasses, can't reproduce. What is it? Is it mules or donkeys that can't reproduce? Right? Uh, so... Uh, if something's alive, it can reproduce. Not, not, not its entire life, right? But at some point, a period during its life, it can reproduce. Um, what does, and I know he's going to get back to this because it occurs in John chapter 7. What does John say about this living water? He said it up here in verse 11. I think it's verse 11. Um, if thou knewest the gift of God, who it is that saith thee, give me to drink, thou wouldst ask him, and he would give thee living water. Sir, give, you don't have anything to draw with. Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. That is, he's, he's never going to not be satisfied. What is satisfying 
about the Christian life? Are you satisfied? What is, what is satisfying about the Christian life? Is, um, now let's go to John 7 real quick. Verse 38. He that believeth on me, as the Scripture say, hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Not only, what, what effect does this water have on us? You and me. Huh? Like you got there, it, it promotes us to reproduce. We're, we're, living, we're living in it. You know, we're, we're it not only makes us alive, it get, makes us do what? Reproduce, right? Satis, satisfying. Satisfies us. Is, is there anything more satisfying on this planet than helping somebody become a child of God? Have you ever found anything? Satis what satisfies you? Golf? Fishing? Driving a car? Plowing a garden? Going to a, you know... Somewhere, ball game. Or what's, what is, is, have you found the fountain of youth yet? Have you found the fountain of youth yet? Yes. Not in those things, but in what? In the, this is the fountain of youth. How is, how is becoming a Christian the fountain of youth? We're going to live forever. That's exactly right. We're living forever with God. With God. What about while we're here on this earth? Is it a fountain of youth here? Does it invigorate us here? Can we, you know, um, I, I talk about how you can reproduce physically for a period of time if you're alive, but uh, what about spiritually? How long can, as far as, how long can you reproduce spiritually? I would say till you don't have the mental capacity. I used to say till you die, but some people will lose the mental capacity before they die. So I, but it, most, a lot of people lose their mental capacity at the point of death. But anyway, so I would say till you lose the mental capacity. Okay? Uh, you can do this up to your deathbed. You can be fully satisfied up to the time you die, right? <laughs> uh, is... Uh, is coming to Bible class a mundane, arduous, or you know, week after week after week? Is that what being a Christian is? Is it a mundane, arduous task? Is it a responsibility I have to do? Why are we here? So we can grow our faith. We can learn new things. How, do, how does our being here worship God? If worshiping, what is the definition of worship? The word, the word, the Greek word translated worship literally means what? Kiss the hand, right? To bow down, not kiss the hand. How how does our being here kiss God's hand? How does that please God? Question is, does it? How should? Let's just say how 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 should it? Does it, would that please you if your children gathered around and listened to what you had to say? Your grandchildren? Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm going to cry. <laughs> Is what we do today also reproduced for generations to come? What do we do? What's our role? We've already said we can't make somebody believe. What, what, is, what, are we, what are we do? What is our role? What do we do? What's, what's our part in this? Well, we need to be examples for other people. Examples? Um, what verse is it that says, uh, 
Is it 1 Corinthians 3, 6 and 7? <clears throat> see if I can do this with my finger. 1 Corinthians 3. Paul says, I planted, Apollos watered, God gave the increase. What's, what's, what's our role? What are, what are the op- opportunities for us? Plant, water. We can also help with the reaping, right? If we uh, eat in the obedience. Evangelize? Yeah. Is well, planting and watering is what I, I was looking for this, but it is evangelism. Because, uh, I mean, when, we, when we're out, we can't force people to change the way they think. Isn't that a great thing that nobody can force you to change the way you think? And you can't change. We, the only thing that changes people's mind is information, good information about the future from a credible source. Yes, sir. But we are told that we're a peculiar people, so if people see that he's peculiar, why is he peculiar? Changes the way I act. That would help in our teaching room. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, brother. I see what you do more than I hear what you say. All right. This uh, time is passing us by here. Let's see. All right. <clears throat> So we already covered that. I have meat to eat that at this point they did not know about. Therefore the disciples said the disciples one to another, who brought him food? And Jesus said, my satisfy, that which satisfies me is doing the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Say not ye, there are yet four months and then cometh the harvest. Behold, I say unto you, Lift up your eyes and look unto the fields, for they are white already to harvest. Why, why do he say that here? He goes on kind of in the same vein. He that reapeth receives wages and gathereth fruit for unto life eternal, that both he that sows and he that reaps may rejoice together. Why, why is he saying this? What do you mean? What does this mean? They say not there yet four months and comes the harvest. There's two, two, two lines of thought, two trains of thought, if you will, that he mentioned in the book, if you read the book. Did anybody read the book on this? One thought is, and I actually had this note in my Bible where somebody had said it before, this must have been the month of January, right? And in April, they would, in, their time, in their world, they were going to reap, okay, if they sowed in January, four months later. Um, that's one train of thought. What's the other one? Just in general, that there's a time delay between the sowing and the reaping. Is that always true when we're sowing the gospel? Some people reap really quick, right? Some people are ready. Maybe they've been planted a, a long time ago and you didn't know it. And you're just watering and then pff, they're ready. I don't know. But he's, he, what, what was the situation here? They were, well, but what, what did the one, uh, so one point he makes in the book, which was really good, uh, too, the woman said, come see a man. Have we, heard, have we heard that phrase before? Actually, in the book of John. I want to say it was in chapter, might have, it was either chapter one or chapter two. Did anybody else use that same verbiage? It, and he brought who with him? Who? Somebody brought, who brought Nathaniel? Or is it Nathaniel that brought somebody? Uh, huh? So the, they, he says, come see a man. Come see, come see. It's the same verbiage, same exact verbiage that the woman used, okay? And uh, the point she made is, uh, it was, was it Nathaniel that got brought? It was Nathaniel that got brought, right? Not Nathaniel that did the bringing. But uh, so do we ever read of Nathaniel ever... Oh, Philip brought Nathaniel? Yeah, Philip said to him, come and see. Come and see. I don't have a man. Well, it was Nathaniel, I think. And so, Philip brought Nathaniel. Did, do we ever have a record of Nathaniel bringing anybody else? We do not. Okay. Who, who, did, uh, who did this woman bring? How many did this woman bring? This sinning, sinner woman, right? This reprobate woman who's, uh, who's had five husbands and now she's on a... a which I've always, uh, I had a lady, and, and I had a lady come in one time, and uh, I think Lana was the secretary, and the preachers were out of town or whatever, and she, she says, could you come up and talk to this woman? And she, so she was uh, very concerned about her 
lifestyle. She had been living with a man for a long period of time. She's like, so, you know, common law marriage. Is that, what does the Bible say about that? What is, what is this? Was this girl living with this guy? What Jesus? I, I just took her to this verse and read it to her. I said, and I don't know what made those other five men her husband other than the fact that she must have been legal what she did, okay? And the one she's with now wasn't, because marriage is a, it's between, it, God's involved, but the law's involved too, right? In, define, in, in, uh, in recording the marriage. And so anyway, she said, he, Jesus himself said, he's not your husband. So just living with somebody, don't make them your husband, okay? Uh, all right, so anyway, um, what was I at? Um, what she went to do. What she went to do. What did she do? What effect did she have? Brought the whole city, <laughs> okay? Was she effective? Mm, yeah, I'd say she was pretty effective, wouldn't you? Uh, so, uh, all right. <clears throat> yes, sir. They're, you know, they're going to be given a charge. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Well, they didn't have anything to do with these people. So he's kind of showing them. These are the people you're going to Absolutely. His first person was... Uh, um, in John 3, what was the guy's name? Nicodemus. Nicodemus, thank you, was a Jew. His first person was a Jew. His second person was a Samaritan, right? So he, and, he's, and there's what, seven? How many people does he go to? Seven miracles he does. But anyway, uh, so he's, he's obviously planning. He had a reason to go through Judea, and it was to meet this woman, and, did he, and it was to have this effect, okay? And to have, do you think it had an So he's telling, what's he telling his disciples? Get with it. They're all coming, right? <laughs> the harvest is here. Don't say, you, you know, we got to wait a while for this. It's coming, all right? Uh, he that reapeth receiveth wages. You'd be, who, the disciples would be reaping, right? Reaping where they hadn't sown, right? Okay? And gathering fruit unto life eternal, that both he that soweth, that'd be the woman, and he that reapeth, that'd be the disciples, okay? Uh, rejoice together. And herein is that saying true. One sows and another reaps. You don't have to do it all. I sent you to reap that whereon you bestowed no labor. Other men labored, and ye are entered into their labors. Many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him. I kind of got hung up on this because, like I do, and it's time's running out and don't want to. I get focused on prepositions, uh, how things relate to each other. Anyway, every time you see believed, it's the interesting enough to me, it's the Greek word when they believed, it's ice, it's not on. It's translated King James on, which is on. Ice is into or towards, okay? So their faith was toward him, all right? And, it, and, it, and that's over and over and over again that that occurs. But anyway, uh, thank you very much. I would suggest, I'm going to tell him to start on chapter 5 on Sunday. So uh, we kind of got the meat of what I was trying to cover there and as hastily as I could. But anyway, chapter, actually there's, I, there's a, we didn't cover the nobleman's son. So he'll start there. There's another paragraph here at the end of chapter 4 on the nobleman's son. Thank you very much.